Hello and welcome back to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and today is going to be such a good day. Every single day has the potential to be a great day. And isn't it incredible to imagine that that is possible for you? Imagine waking up every single morning feeling like the day is going to be a great day. And I know we have days that we're off. Yes, yes, yes. There are days you are human when things happen that are outside of your control. But imagine a life where your leadership, your service to patients, your career goals, your parenting, your intimate relationships, your friendships are always feeling full and satisfying. And that every day is pregnant with potential and opportunity. Because simply changing your mindset from constantly searching for the problem to constantly being aware of opportunity literally changes the chemicals in your body. And that is what we're talking about today. We are looking at this really huge concept of overwhelm. (laughs) And overwhelm is such a sneaky, insidious component of what's making us feel bad, of what's actually stopping us from living the life of our dreams. That overwhelm is also within your ability to see from a new perspective. I know. I know, I know exactly what your mind is feeding you right now because I think mine would have said the same thing all those many decades that I was literally living in overwhelm. I would would have said when I heard this podcast, I would have been like, Taryn, you have no idea. You do not know me. (laughs) Everything is overwhelming. You do not know the practice I work in. You do not know the business I own. You do not know the children and the family I have. You do not know the demands on me. My life is overwhelming. And today I'm going to offer you a beautiful 3D in this moment in time strategy of how to release that sense of overwhelm just a little bit so that you can get a glimpse of what's possible for you on the other side. Shall we do this? Let's do this. Let's talk about overwhelm first in terms of what it's preventing you from experiencing. Overwhelm is one of those identifications. You know, the more you feel a certain thing, the more it becomes a mood, right? Like, I'm all, my mood is overwhelm. So once we start practicing it more and more, that mood eventually becomes like a season in our life. That was my overwhelming period of my life. We even hear ourselves say those things or using that language. And then when we practice overwhelm more and more and more and that overwhelm becomes, we become really good at it, it never ceases and now it becomes almost a personality. And for a moment, I want you to just self-reflect Has that become your personality where it really doesn't matter how old your kids are or how mature your practice is or how long you've been married or how, whether you're fat or thin or healthy or strong or weak or sick, you always feel overwhelmed. Does that seem to perpetuate in your life, this sense of overwhelm? And you keep thinking, when this happens, I'll feel less overwhelmed. And what we do is we put that power in the hands of things outside of ourselves, which we have zero control over. We have no control over the things outside of us. And every time we say, you know what, when I just get to this point, when I get to just this amount of money in the bank, when I just get to this level of X, Y, Z, then I'll feel less overwhelmed. What you're doing in that moment is you're giving away your power in that moment, And that moment, the present moment, is where all your power lies. I don't care how much money you have in the bank or how much debt you're in or what your family, greater family looks like or what responsibilities you've taken on. There is always opportunity to release the overwhelm. Let's do it now. 
So what I'd love for you to do in this beautiful exercise, we're going to talk about a couple of things, but this is, I'm literally giving you the keys to how to decrease that sense of overwhelm. If you're listening to this as you're driving, please flag this beautiful podcast episode because you're going to come back to it later when you can sit down with a piece of paper and a pen. And if you're listening to this in a place where you can do so, grab a beautiful, nice new sheet of paper, a big one, and a pen and a highlighter. Oh my gosh, am I speaking your language right now? (laughs) If everyone going back to school right now, my kids are buying all their stationery and their pens and pencils and notebooks, and I'm just giddy because I love, love some new delicious stationery. So use this as a beautiful opportunity to play. So get out a nice piece of paper or make it not so big and important, just a big piece of paper, pen, and a highlighter because here we're going to go. What I'd love for you to do is... Write down everything in bullet points. Another fun, exciting thing that I know we all love to do. Literally put bullet points on a piece of paper and write down every responsibility and expectation or to-do item that is weighing on your mind. You're feeling overwhelmed? Write it down. All the things, big or small. It can be as big as, I need to create a new program. I need to write a new chapter in a book. Or as small as, I need to order stationery for my kid on Amazon. Or I need to talk to my office manager. It can be big or small. I need to paint my toenails. Whatever. I need to pack for the next trip. I need to sit down with the schedule and organize the calendar for the year. Give yourself permission to write it all down. And... If you'd like, you can pause the podcast right here and go ahead and do that because I'm going to be working with this, with you, with this in real time. So go ahead, make that happen for yourself. The thing about writing it down is immediately we're helping our brain out. We're immediately giving ourselves an opportunity to take all of those spinning thoughts out of your head and give it clarity on the page. And what's so incredible about this exercise is sometimes when we do it, we realize, Oh, wow. My list is not that long. Just simply doing this first step might ease your overwhelm. The fact is that we have billions of thoughts running through our head every single day. And just that can feel overwhelming. And when we tell ourselves, I'm so overwhelmed, what we're doing is we're actually giving ourselves an excuse not to take action on things. Overwhelm has led to so many years of procrastination for me. Overwhelm has prevented me from taking action on my dreams. Just saying the words overwhelm almost gives you like a get out of jail free pass to never do anything for yourself, never grow big new change in your life. So give yourself permission to just write it all down. Put it on a large piece of paper. Get it all out of your head. And just by doing that, we're pulling those thoughts and the weight and the energetic heaviness of those thoughts and expectations out of our heads. And immediately you should feel a little bit lighter. And once you have everything written down, I want you to literally get up and get outside. Yeah, now. (laughs) Literally put the piece of paper down and you're going to have to fight some old programming. I know. I know this because your old programming might say, okay, let's get started. In fact, the act of just writing little bullet points on the page might have gotten a little dopamine hit for you there. And you might feel a little motivated to actually start doing some of these things. And I'm going to ask you to pause, to take a break, to step outside. Here's why. I want you to just move away from those limited mindsets that created that list. I want you to step outside. If you can, put your feet in the grass, turn your face up to the sun. If it's pouring rain, turn your face up to the rain and take a nice deep breath in and fully exhale. Take another deep breath in through your nose, eyes closed, deep breath in. Fill your lungs and hold it at the top and fully, fully, fully exhale. I would do a third deep breath in, holding it at the top and fully, fully exhaling. With your eyes closed, you can be listening to me right now. What you're doing is you're regulating your nervous system. You're bringing yourself back 
to parasympathetic calm. You're reminding yourself that nothing actually matters. That if nothing happened on that list, you are whole. You are enough. You are worthy. The sun will still shine on your face. You will get up tomorrow and it'll still be there. You're safe. You are so safe. You are so whole. And once you've gotten that beautiful memory back, oh yes, none of this matters. I am whole. I am loved. I am safe. Now we can get back to the list. Imagine this. Three days away from work, three days away from your regular life, from your family, from the day-to-day hustle and bustle, to just rest and reconnect with you. Here's the truth. Nobody knows you like you do. Nobody knows the joys and the sorrows and the fears and the frustrations and the stresses and the overwhelm and the exhaustion and your patience and your team and your family. Nobody knows what you're going through better than you. Nobody knows what brings you joy and fuels you and fulfills you. Nobody knows your dreams and desires like you do. And the secret to how to access That beautiful wisdom inside of you, the guru inside of you, waits for you at the Empower Her Retreat. This incredible retreat happening this October 17th through 20th is an opportunity for you to fall back in love with yourself, to identify your directional compass, and to lean into trust, self-trust, the trust of that inner wisdom www.empowerherretreat.org. Join us there. Sign up. There are only a few spots left. This is your opportunity to change the direction of your life. This little reset is so important because what I want you to do now is look at that list. And I want you to cross off every single thing that you can delete, that you can let go of. These are the things that you realize are stories you've been telling yourself or expectations that you've had that are completely unrealistic and silly. Maybe they're expectations that other people have had for you that you've been perpetuating and you are just ready to let go of. Maybe there are to-do items on there of things you've been doing for so long that you don't even know why you've been doing them, but they're redundant. They're not aligned with the person you are now because we are always changing. We are always evolving. So sometimes those things you used to do, you can just cross off. I'll give you a great example. I used to, when I first opened my practice, drive around and introduce myself to all the dentists that I could in the area. There came a point in time where I didn't need to do that anymore. I now actually had to be present in my practice, but I kept using my lunch hour to go and drive to all the, as many dentists as I could. In fact, I had a number. I needed to go see three dentists every lunch hour. That was just a number I made up. Did it serve me in the beginning of my practice? Absolutely. But did there become a time where I could let that practice go? Absolutely. So what has been on your list that you can now let go of? Looking carefully at old paradigms, old expectations, or old habit patterns. If you tell yourself as you look at any of these items, well, this is just the way I've always done it. Ah, that is a sign that you could probably consider either rewriting that in a new way or crossing it off completely being very clear with the standards that are now aligned for who you are today. Not who you were 10 years ago. Not even who you were last week, but who you are today. Now that you've crossed a whole bunch of them off, how does that feel? So first of all, just take a moment and look at this list and realize, oh my gosh, that feels so much lighter. I want you to just imagine that you've just been wearing this heavy, heavy coat with a million pockets and each pocket has a heavy rock in it. And I want you to imagine that each line item you've crossed off, you're literally taking a rock out and putting it down on the ground and feel how good that feels. Amazing. Let's go on to the next step. What I now want you to do is circle every item that you can delegate. 
You know, there's an incredible book that was written by um, Dan Sullivan and Ben Hardy, and it's called Who Not How, The Formula to Achieve Bigger Things. And I'd love for you to keep that mantra, I love that title of the book, Who Not How, in your head. What line items on your list of things you feel like you need to do can you delegate? Can you delegate to someone on your team, someone in your family, someone in your community? Can you reach out for help and ask for help? What items can you delegate? And this is such a powerful tool. This is such a powerful skill to be able to ask for help and then to receive it. So you don't have to ask right now. I just want you to circle the ones you can delegate. Go ahead. Be creative. Can your nanny do one of these things? Can your neighbor do one of these things? Can your daughter do one of these things? Can your son do one of these things? Can your husband do one of these things? Can your receptionist do one of these things? Can your social media manager do one of these things? And if it can't be delegated, can it be automated by someone else? In other words, in this beautiful, highly evolved technological society that we have, can you automate digitally something on your list? Can you streamline the process? Just circle it. Beautiful. Once again, take a look at your beautiful page and I want you to take another deep breath. And this time I want you to be so proud of yourself because delegating and asking for help is a skill that is learned. It is not that some people are good at it and others aren't. You can learn it too, even if you've never done that in your life. Even if you have always been the one to pick up all the pieces for everyone else. Even if you've told yourself your whole life long that if a job is worth doing, it's worth doing yourself. You've just taken the first step towards delegation by identifying those line items that you can hand off. Who, not how. Oh, how good does that feel? And celebrate yourself. You are learning how to step away from overwhelm. You are learning to take radical personal responsibility for your own life by delegating. And it is beautiful. And you are so capable. And by simply circling those things on your list, you've taken the first step. So celebrate yourself. That is no small act, by the way, because when we celebrate ourselves, we give ourselves evidence that we can do new things, that we can learn new skills. Your body and your mind starts to realize, oh, wait a minute. I don't have to be so overwhelmed by a task I've never done before, by something new, because I just did something new. I can do new things. I love that phrase. And we all have heard Glennon Doyle's. Beautiful uh, phrase, we can do hard things. But even using the word hard can sometimes trigger a little bit of overwhelm, like, oh my God, it's going to be hard. What if we just changed the phrase to, we can do new things? And isn't that the truth? And maybe that's all you get. Maybe that little phrase sticks with you now as you listen to this podcast. You can do new things. Now I want you to take that beautiful highlighter. And now you get permission (laughs) to finally highlight the very few items left on your list that absolutely need your attention and resist the urge to go back and highlight something you crossed off or you circled. You just get to do the ones that are left over. These are the items that are going to deserve your beautiful attention without the weight of your overwhelm. And now to simplify them even more, You're going to put a date next to each one of them, a date that is the absolute date that this needs to be attended by. Be honest with yourself. When does this actually need to be done? You know, I think so often we create the sense of urgency that isn't real. So give yourself permission to be really honest with yourself. When does this really do? When do I really need to get this done by? And now you have a beautiful list of all the items that need your attention in order, in chronological order, you know where to start. And what I would recommend here is another moment of celebration because that celebration will also be your motivation. And this whole time we thought that 
threatening ourselves, pushing ourselves, demanding more from ourselves, punishing ourselves was the way to motivate. And it's the exact opposite. Learning to celebrate yourself might actually be one of the greatest superpowers. Because when you become your best cheerleader, you feel good. Remember, when you feel good, you can do good. I mean it. And by creating a sense of support within yourself, a language and a mantra of love and excitement and pride and compassion, you're boistering that ability to step into new things. You're giving yourself fuel to take action. And as you go down this beautiful list, I encourage you to celebrate yourself with every single one in ways little and big. Literally, guys, I do this to myself every day. You can bet your bottom dollar that as soon as I finish this podcast episode, I'm going to be dancing around the room and saying, go, Taryn, you're amazing. I can't believe. Yes, this is 327. I don't remember which podcast episode this is, but yes, I've done all many, many episodes and I still celebrate myself. And that is why I'm on number 327. Because I celebrate myself. That is my motivational fuel. It is a super secret superpower. Give yourself that ability to fuel and feed yourself. Don't wait for it from someone else. Don't wait for someone else to say, I'm so proud of you. You get to do that for yourself and magic is going to happen. As you go ahead into this week, I offer you this beautiful practice. It's simple. It will take 10 minutes and it'll feel so much lighter. And give yourself permission to let go of that old, overwhelmed personality. Let that be who you used to be. Step into this new empowered self who celebrates herself, who gives herself grace who doesn't add so much onto her plate that she can't even take action on the first. You're doing amazing things. And remembering this one thing will support you always. When you feel good, that is when you can do really great things. Bye-bye. Hey, beauty, if you enjoyed this episode, then like and subscribe to the show and Receive this beautiful message of empowerment, remembering what you are capable of and the purpose you serve in this world every single week. And if you know of a colleague who needs this message, share this episode with her. This is how we raise the collective in healthcare, reminding one another and supporting one another. Community is the answer. This is how we grow it. And lastly, I invite you to a phenomenal in-person event this October 2024, the Empower Her Retreat, exclusively for women in medicine and dentistry on the beach. It will change your life. And I cannot wait to see you there. Check out the details in the show notes and have a phenomenal day remembering that you are enough.